how is it going guys drew peacock here back with another video and today we are going to be discussing a very particular topic that i've been wanting to talk about for quite some time we've talked about a lot of ricers before but we've never talked about the advanced ricers now hear me out they exist they are ricers that know more than the routine ricers that just toss on stuff because it makes car look faster like fake hood scoop and big wings no 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 these are risers who know a thing or two about the car scene, but still just cut corners to try to, I don't know, fake it till you make it, I guess you can say. We're going to be talking about a few mods that advanced risers love to put on their cars. Now, these mods are all subjective to the certain builds. Just because you have these mods, or if you do have these mods, doesn't make you a ricer. It just depends on your build as a whole. I'm talking about people with stock or relatively stock cars. Haven't touched the engine at all besides maybe some spray paint and some fucking pool noodles. And honestly, have, have, no, have no goal to. They, they, they just say that they're eventually going to turbo it or whatever the hell they say, but they're never going to. We all know they're never going to. Anyways, let's go ahead and dive right in. First mod, and this one is going to kind of let you guys set the tone for what we're going to be talking about. And that is the fire extinguisher. Now, no, no, no. Just because you have a fire extinguisher doesn't mean you're a ricer. Trust me, I have one too in my Supra. Doesn't mean you're a ricer, but if you have a fire extinguisher in your car because you think it looks cool or because you think that it means that you go to the track or something, no, buddy. Look it. I've seen it way too many times on Craigslist and even a few times on my submissions that you guys send me. Some people mount the fire extinguishers in spots that are just very unsafe. Mounting it across the cabin... Now, I, that just goes to show you have no idea what you're talking about. That's what I'm saying. If you do this, if you mount your fire extinguisher in a place to where you can't reach it, then you obviously have no idea what you're doing. And you're there for a ricer. This doesn't necessarily mean that the, the mod itself is rice. It's just how you went about doing it. You obviously did it to make it look like you race your car. Therefore, a race-inspired cosmetic enhancement. Dude, the kid's got a fire extinguisher. He must be serious. It's mounted on his passenger side A pillar. He's not serious. He has no idea what the hell he's doing. Not everyone that has a fire extinguisher is a ricer, like I said. But if you have it mounted in a very unusual spot where you can't reach it if you were pinned in a collision, well, you're screwed. Next mod, and I know this one's going to rustle some feathers, but a lot of people seem to do it. And a lot of people don't really understand what the hell they're doing. And that is putting carbon fiber overlays. I'm not talking about carbon fiber components. And I think that there are some overlays that I am, you know, 100% cool with. If you can't find a specific piece in carbon fiber and you need it to match the rest of your interior or your exterior, I guess go ahead. Go ahead and either wrap it carbon fiber or put an overlay over it. But putting a carbon fiber overlay all over your interior just to make it look carbon fiber when underneath is still the factory cheap plastic. A lot of S550 owners do this. A lot of Mustang owners in general do this doesn't make your car any faster any more aggressive it's stupid essentially you're putting a big sticker over your whole interior why because it looks cooler i guess yes carbon fiber does look really nice don't get me wrong but you're doing the exact opposite of what you're supposed to be doing if they sell the piece in carbon fiber my rule of thumb is well if you want it to look carbon fiber then buy it in carbon fiber instead of putting a sticker over top of it if you can't afford the carbon fiber, then I guess you can go this route, but typically if you own an S550 Mustang GT or a Shelby or something like that, you can probably afford it, buddy. Might as well just buy the real shit. This is one of those mods in a sense that's going to make you look a little bit lighter, a little bit faster, maybe like you're a little bit more serious about the whole racing thing, but at the same time, it's just a sticker. It doesn't really do anything. So in my book, this is a little advanced ricer mod. The exceptions would be, I guess, if you just really can't afford the carbon fiber, go for it. Or if they don't sell that specific piece in carbon fiber, then go for it. For my three valve, I know they don't sell the radio bezel anymore in a carbon fiber piece and they have the overlay. So if I were to ever do the full interior in carbon fiber, might as well get, a, get an overlay to match, right? But now S550 guys are really, really guilty of this. BRZ owners, they all do the same shit. A lot of people do this. And again... You could do what you want, but at the end of the day, you're just putting a sticker on top of plastic. Next mod, and again, it's not a ricer mod, but I've seen it too many times in ricer cars, and that is harnesses. Harnesses, very safe, very, very needed. If you are going to a track or you're going to be doing some crazy shit, drag strip, anything high horsepower, 
I recommend harnesses. Harnesses are very safe, and I recommend them if you actually, you know, envy your life. But if you go and you mount your harnesses to the floorboard behind your seat like a ricer, and you have no idea what you're doing, and you're just pulling up to park and chills, what's the point? If you get into an accident, you're going to submarine anyway, and you're going to lose your spine or your legs or something just really, really bad. If you don't know what you're doing, don't do it. I love harnesses. I don't know if I would ever want to harness in one of my street cars, but harnesses, trust me, man, they make you feel safe. I know I'd feel a hell of a lot safer if I had a harness bar and some harnesses in my cars, but at the same time, you got to do it right. You got to get racing seats. You got to mount them right. You got to make sure that you know what you're doing, because if you don't, you're only going to hurt yourself. I've seen a lot of builds here in SoCal with people with harnesses and harness bars, and they got nothing underneath the hood, and they have no intentions of ever racing the car. Why are they buying harnesses? Well, because it looks faster. It looks like you're serious. It looks like your car's more aggressive or something, I guess. If the guy's got harnesses, he must seriously race the shit out of his car. But he doesn't. He just pulls up to park and chills. I've seen it a thousand times. Harnesses don't make you a ricer. Harnesses in your daily, just pulling up to park and chills? Maybe. All right. Next mod, moving on to the exterior. We're talking about that good old-fashioned neon headlights. I see it all the time, and I don't know what's with the trend. Neon is cool and all, and I love rainbows and everything, but making your first mod just some retrofit neon headlights that can do rainbows and strobes? I don't know about that one. Now, this one, the Mopar scene, is really, really guilty of. I'm not talking about the good old-fashioned Halo headlights. I like Halo headlights. Making your old car look more modern with some Halo headlights, a good set of them, looks great. But when you go and you make your whole car look like a dance club, I mean, come on, man. Especially if you ain't got nothing going on underneath the hood. Come on, man. I've seen it a few times at car meets where this is everyone's first mod. Hey, I want to make my headlights look neon and rainbow colorful and strobe and go to music. It's cool and all, I guess, if you're into that. But I just don't really see the point, personally. At least not for the first mod. This is like some finishing touches shit. But people love that shit. People love seeing the, the headlights go rainbow. Headlights bright, me like. Headlights colorful, me like more. Now, if you're a dick and you go and make your headlights the brightest shit on the road, brighter than high beams, you're just an asshole. And you're probably compensating for something, but that's a different story. But, yes, making your headlights just a little bit more colorful. In my book, I don't know. If it's a stock car and you, again, it's just a little goofy. It's not for me. This one's not really race inspired. This one I just don't like. On some builds, I've seen it and they pull it off really cool. They integrate it into their whole build, you know, they can make it, you know, change colors kind of. And it's pretty sick, but as your first mod buddy, I don't think so. You should have at least gotten that k &N intake before you fucking went and made your headlights a disco party. Alright, moving on to the last quote-unquote mod. And this one uh, is just confusing. We're talking about up-badging cars. You go and you take a V6 Mustang, and you badge it as a Shelby. You go and you take a 350Z, you badge it as a Nismo. You go and take a 328i, and you badge it as an M car. The reason why this one's a little bit confusing is because the car guy itself, the owner, obviously understands why that car is better and what makes it better. Not just the little cool snake on the side, but the performance and the, 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 the want that everyone is feeling for that car. It's a desired vehicle. People want the Shelby. People want the M Sport. People want the GTR. So why are you up badging your V6 piece of shit if you understand that it isn't that? This one, again, it's just really confusing. And if you go a step further and you look at it and you know what a Shelby is or you know what a GTR is or a Nismo is and all that fun stuff, well, why are you doing it? Because all the other car guys are going to know you're faking it. So who are you trying to impress here? The bimbo? The bimbo at, at Applebee's wouldn't wouldn't carry either way. She sees Mustang, she says cool. She sees 350, she thinks cool. Sporty coupe. So she doesn't care about the snake on the side. You could tell her it's a V8 and she might not even know the difference. And if she does and you're caught with the snake badge, then it's just a hell of a lot more embarrassing. This one just doesn't make sense. I don't know who it's for. I don't know why people up badge cars and make their V6s look like Shelby's. A lot of a lot of car brands are guilty of this, okay? A lot of car enthusiasts. You got people up badging Mustangs, of course. You got RS Camaros making them look like SSs. You don't see too many people faking STIs out there, so that's good. But the BMW scene as a whole, the <laughs> whole BMW community, they, they love putting that M Sport on all their cars. 
again i just don't know who it's for if you guys want to explain in the comments if you guys want to defend yourself go ahead and let me know but personally up badging a car i mean i think a lot of you guys will agree that that is just flat out rice you don't own the car don't act like you do anyway guys that's gonna do it for this video if you did enjoy this video please leave a thumbs up let me know if i missed any of these i will make maybe a part two if you guys give me any down in the comments down below this is all just based on what I see. Just because you have one of these mods doesn't mean you're a ricer unless you're fake badging your car. But besides that, you should be good. Anyways, subscribe to see more videos like this one. And until next video, peace.